The last set of commands that I'm going to introduce are applicable to the homework that you're going to be doing for this week. So in order to double check your objects, the distance, the angle, etc., you can enlist, enlist the help of two commands. One is the list command and the other is the distance command. So if you select an object, let's just, um, for example's sake, copy this over. Okay, so if you select an object and perform a list command, so what this does is it's not a command that modifies or draws anything, it just gives you a list of information about that object. So I can type in list um, either before or after I select my object, and I will select my object and hit enter. Okay, you can also do it with multiple objects. And what it does is it comes up with a list of properties. So here you have um, the line, it tells me the layer that it's on, it tells me um, from point what to po point what, it gives my x, y, and z coordinates, and it tells me the length, okay, that it is, and the angle that it is. Okay, so you can always double check your work that way. Um, to get out of that, I just click back into my model space window. Um, and then there's the distance command. And the way that it differs from the list command is that the dis com distance command off, uh, acts basically as a ruler. So you have to specify the points where to take um, a measurement and the distance command will tell you that measurement and the angle of the object. So to activate the distance command, I can either type in DIST or DI is the alias, or I can type in distance um, and hit enter. And then again, it's going to ask me, so I'm going to look at my command line, it's going to ask me to specify a first point, and this again is where your object snaps are going to give you the most accurate uh, reading. Okay, so I'm going to use my object snaps, make sure that it's on, you can see it's clicking to my endpoint, and I'm going to snap from that endpoint to this endpoint. And I can see that in my call up that they're 7 and 3 16 inches apart from each other. Okay, if I want to double check, the length of it, okay, again, I can just hit enter. Um, what I did is I right clicked, okay, and by default this window pops up and I can go to repeat distance, okay, and then I go from endpoint to endpoint and it'll tell me again that it's three foot four and seven sixteenths distance and that's the same distance that I got in the list command. The other one is to call up the properties. And so if you ever want to look at any of the properties that an object has, okay, you can either type in control plus one, which is the way that I do it. I find it's the quickest and easiest. Um, or you can type in properties or you can type in PR. So if I type control one, okay, this window should pop up. It's the first time opening it, so it was a little bit slow. And it'll tell me um, and it'll give me properties for my object that I have selected. Now, that's key that it's what I have selected because right now you can see that there's no selection. However, when I select, okay, click on an object, it'll tell me the properties of it. Okay, so it'll tell me the length, again, that three foot four and seven sixteenths. It'll tell me the angle, this was all noted in the list. Um, and then I can, you know, work with some of these properties and we'll work with them a little bit later on. As for now, just keep this as is um, because we'll be discussing it a lot more later on. So um, it's an incredibly useful tool, you know, for a more advanced user. And what results here, okay, is called a palette, which is different from the ribbon. Okay, you'll find that we'll introduce different palettes throughout um, the course. And what these do is they just sit on top of top of model space and I can minimize them, I can maximize them, and I can get rid of them as I did. Okay, so another um, tool or command that I want to show you is options. And if I type in options, okay, again, it's the first time opening it up, so it's a little bit slow. You can see that these are actually op uh, options that you can set as a drafter. Okay, and these, um, you know, settings are basically what controls what you look at. So you can set up your grip size, you can set up uh, what colors your um, display has, you can, um, you know, you can set up uh, how to save your file, um, so on and so forth. So that's a big thing, is when you start to work for, with firms, a lot of times they don't update to the most recent release of AutoCAD. 
Um, so AutoCAD saves files in the normal DWG format, um, which is their drawing format. And with the version um, 2007, okay, a new type of format was introduced that cannot be opened with the previous versions of AutoCAD without saving accordingly. So what that means <coughs> is that if you're working on an earlier version of AutoCAD, and let's say I have a 2013 version um, drawing, and I have a 2007 version of AutoCAD, I can't open it up my 2013 into 2007. So what you essentially have to do is you have to downsave. So you can either automatically set that up here, okay, to downsave to uh, a specific release, a specific point every single time you save, okay, or if I go into save as, okay, I can do the same thing here too as well. Okay, so with this class, um, because I'll also be using 2016, we're not going to have a big issue with it. But there are times when you do need to downsave, and that's how you would downsave. Um, and help. Okay, so if you need from help from AutoCAD or want to search tools and options, you can either type in help or you can hit the F1 key. <clears throat> Personally, I find this to be a little bit cumbersome in that I find that you have to know um, almost exactly what you're looking for in order to, you know, kind of find what you want to find. Um, personally, you know, of all the resources, I actually find that Google and blogs are the most helpful along with the recommended text, which is really, really thick and, you know, it's thick for a reason. AutoCAD is an extremely complex program um, and it's not ma a matter of if it can do something, but how it can do it. So a lot of times, you know, with this type of um, help, you know, you have to be specific. I tend to find that on Google, I can be a little bit more vague and there are tons and tons and tons of blogs, of um, chat rooms, you know, of help rooms that people are working through the problem. So there is a lot of, um, you know, resources for help out there when you start to work with AutoCAD.